here a 2003 Volkswagen Beetle with a 1.8 T. The customer complains of a small antifreeze leak, which we're not real concerned with, and uh, he only has to add antifreeze once every three months, so I don't know how we're going to even be able to identify that and fix that. But the second complaint is he has a hissing noise. He assumes that's a boost leak. And the third complaint is he has a check engine light. I always love these 1AT cars because whenever we scan them, we get a ton of trouble codes, which doesn't make our life easy. It makes it hard. And uh, he wants the check engine light gone, but I doubt he wants to spend a bunch of money fixing three or four different problems. And you never know how many of those problems are going to clear how many trouble codes, but we'll scan it and go from there. All right, we have the auto scan here for this orange beetle. And as I said, one of his complaints is check engine light, and he thinks he has a boost leak, a hissing noise. Right off the bat, we have boost pressure control valve in 249 mechanical malfunction. Seventeen five fifty nine long term fuel trim additive system lean idle control higher than expected bank one camshaft advanced set point not reached three random misfire cylinder two misfire pressure drop between turbo and throttle valve check diverter valve that goes And the last trouble code is long-term field trim additive, bank one, range two, system two, rich. So we have lean trouble codes and rich trouble codes. I think we'll take it for a road test and take a look at boost graphs and see if we can tell what's going on with the boost problem. Okay, we're graphing this and you graph boost on a 1AT in, in group 115. <clears throat> truck's got some pipes on it. Get on it. Uh, the noise is definitely there. And this is what we're looking at here. We're looking for desired, which is white, to follow actual. I'm really sorry about the glare here. There's nothing I can do about it. I've been trying to use a screen recorder, but the screen recorder records an MP4 and it won't let me edit it in the editing software that I use. I probably need to get some different editing software. Uh, if anybody knows a good screen recorder that works with Microsoft Windows edit, film editor, let me know. And the, uh, um, I also need to find a better editor, I'm sure. But uh, at this point, that's what I got. Okay, slow down a little bit and then floor it. Okay, it just limped, I think. see there that uh, when it went into limp mode that actual boost does not reach uh, requested boost. Okay as a side note we're not really uh, diagnosing this right now but we thought we'd look at it. In group 90 field 3 there's a crankshaft degrees of rotation with regards to the camshaft and we're not getting any change there. When we accelerate, when we decelerate it always say says off and uh, it always stays at zero even whether it's at idle sitting still whether we're accelerating hard or not and uh, I think that's probably due to uh, the code but uh, I just thought that's interesting to note uh, customer did not okay us to diagnose this problem we're really just concerned with the boost problem right now so I'm not sure we're gonna do anything with that but Cortland if you could get on it as you turn the corner here and or after you turn the corner in a second so we're gonna floor it real quick here just see if it changes anything and it's staying off and not really changing the camshaft adjustment okay whenever we're looking for a boost leak the first thing we do is just rev it up to see if we can find it if it's obvious after that we'll smoke check it but a lot of uh, boost leaks won't 
show up with a smoke check because the smoke machine can only put out a little bit of PSI and the turbo puts out much more than that. So a lot of times if uh, like it's a clamp out of position or something like that, it will uh, not show up on the smoke machine. But we like to rev the engine real quick to see if we can tell where it's coming from. And we'll uh, go ahead and start revving it, Corley. We're going to check the wastegate real quick. Um, we do that at the N75. We will um, disconnect the hose that goes down to the wastegate and we'll blow air pressure in it. That does operate off boost pressure, so shop air pressure from the air compressor works just fine. And we can push that wastegate open and see that it's working. The way this would normally work is boost pressure would come through here and then the solenoid would open up and push it through here to go to the wastegate and open it up. So uh, we'll remove this clamp right there. We'll remove this clamp right here, blow air pressure in there to check the wastegate. Okay, Cortland's gonna blow in our hose. And if you could just go like repeated several times and uh, go ahead and show us what you're gonna do. We'll look underneath it while you're doing okay right there we're looking at the wastegate arm if you'll go ahead and cycle that a few times Corlin hold it for just a little bit longer let's make sure it's opening all the way and that seems to be working like it's designed it would be that that's good it would be a good check to go ahead and remove that hose right there and uh, put a vacuum pump on it to make sure that diaphragm isn't like just slightly ruptured or something But at this point I can safely say the wastegate is at least working It's closed right now and the pre when he gives it pressure it opens it up in order to help control uh, an over boosting situation, but uh, Obviously something's wrong here because we're over boosting. Okay. We have found the boost leak It is coming from this tube right here Probably show it to you if I twist it. There's a split in the hose right there. I'll show it to you better once I get it off, but um, this is the diverter valve. Back there is the N75, and the N75 takes boost pressure from that same source, that same hose right there, and sends it to the wastegate in order to open the wastegate when pressure is too much. So you have a diverter valve, N75 solenoid, N249 solenoid, and wastegate down below. Okay, we pulled the hose off and there's the split in the hose. Obviously that's gonna make a big boost leak. And we have the new hose here. There's the part number on it. Guess we should compare the two to make sure they're right, reinstall it and drive the car. So we have the new hose installed and we're gonna clear codes and we're gonna road test it and craft. Engine stumbles a little bit when I cleared codes, probably because fuel trim's reset. And we are going to I guess we can kind of take a quick look at fuel trims here. And the reset to zero. Can you rev the engine just a little bit, see if it'll wake up that uh, short term? Oh, oh, there it goes. Whoa, that's strange voltage on no two sensor. There it goes. So it went all the way up to uh, 23, 25 so we probably still have a fuel trim problem there and we will go ahead and graph the boost as we drive it it's field 115 and graph and then I always like to turn off the other distracting elements of those two and we'll go drive it again That's pretty good boost control there. Um, so we're gonna head back to the shop. We may need to look into some of the other trouble codes, but this probably is gonna be a fix. Okay, we have just returned from the test drive on the Beetle, and this N249 boost pressure control valve mechanical malfunction has reoccurred. Uh, we'll have to look into that further. We have fixed the boost leak. The hissing noise is no longer there. Uh, and we also have had a code reoccur for 
oxygen sensor regulation system to lean. I think we kind of knew that was going to happen because before we test drove it we saw that uh, uh, fuel trim was 25 on the short term and that 25 is it's no longer there but it has went into uh, the long term up there and there so uh, obviously it triggered the trouble code and we will uh, maybe look into that a bit as well as the N249 trouble code. Okay we are now trying to look into the N249 mechanical malfunction trouble code Luckily, the hose, even though it has a clamp on it, pulls right off the diverter valve. And when we try and pump it up, it does not hold vacuum. And I really think while we're here, we, we need to test this solenoid. So uh, we are going to jump our vacuum to it with our gauge hook to it and run the output test on it to see if we can uh, see it cycle. Okay, I have a vacuum pump hooked here. And I'm going to turn that on and show you that it's got vacuum. And we're going to put that as a vacuum source to our solenoid. Can that be seen? Yep. Because the output test will not run on a 1.8T car, or at least this 1.8T car, with the... The output test will not run on a 1.8T car, at least this 1.8T car, with the engine running. So I have to have the engine running, so in order to have vacuum, I have to use this vacuum pump in order to provide it with vacuum. So, got communication, going to the output test, click start. And we can all hear it working, but what I want to do is see it working. So we know that solenoid is working. Hmm. So with that test passing like that, we can be pretty confident it's just the diverter valve causing the problem. Okay, we have received the new diverter valve and got it installed, and we'll look into finding the lean condition. Maybe look for some vacuum leaks and stuff. Okay, we are trying to find the vacuum leak for this lean trouble code, and as I said, this car has adapted all the way to 7.3 at idle, and right now, uh, because I've been tinkering with it, this is running relatively okay, back and forth to negative to positive, but as soon as I have Portland spray this here, go ahead, you can see the engine stumbles, and it immediately goes to negative 26. That's enough. And where he is spraying is right down there on the intake manifold. Uh, we're trying to stay off the injector here because there are injector o-rings there that can leak but he's spraying right around the intake manifold and that's where the vacuum leak is and it also does the same thing around other areas of the, of the intake manifold and you can see there our fuel trims go into the negative each time we do that if i soak it down It almost dies. Okay, real quick, I just want to point out that this crankcase vent tube has been replaced. This T has been replaced. I would assume they've replaced the PVC valve and this hose has been replaced. So when we spraying us, so with us spraying the intake manifold, we're not spraying into the PVC system and we are spraying, uh, getting, we are identifying a actual intake leak, not just getting down here in the fuel that we're spraying getting into the PVC system. I guess it's possible whatever mechanic uh, did this work right here might have took the intake off and caused these gaskets to leak, but that's what it needs, intake gaskets. Okay, Cortland has replaced the intake gasket on this Beetle.
or that would make a huge change in the idle. Maybe running just a bit lean. Engine isn't really warmed up. It's uh, it's been running long enough for the oxygen sensor to go live, of course. But maybe that'll be okay. Maybe it won't. We'll probably have to take this for a drive and see how it adapts. We have finished the road test on this Beetle, and it looks like that. Short term's going back and forth negative to positive, so I like that. Um, adaptation at idle here has went up a little bit, but not too much. And adaptation at partial throttle is not too bad. So we might be able to call this one fixed. We're gonna drive it some more, see if any other trouble codes reoccur. At this point, none have. <clears throat> okay, it's a couple days later on this orange beetle. I uh, had a bout with the flu and uh, Cortland handled a little minor misfire. It had uh, a wide open throttle. It would just chug just barely and the misfire counters would show uh, one or two misfires on, on several cylinders. Uh, we did some uh, amp testing at the coil packs and, and uh, didn't really come up with anything solid but we pulled the spark plugs out and they were a cheap brand and when you're running a turbo car you got to have the right plugs in there and he put uh, NKG Platinums in there and it seemed to solve the issue uh, but we have had this car a couple extra days road testing it and checking out the AC and uh, I wanted to demonstrate that we seem to have no codes uh, I think we've driven it enough with enough key cycles where if something was going to reoccur it would have reoccurred and maybe we'll go to um, readiness see what all has, re has passed uh, secondary air has failed or it's incomplete. There is no secondary air pump on this car and I uh, that may cat may be no good or maybe it's failing because of this but either way uh, we, we still have no trouble codes though. So we are gonna call this as good as we can get it for now. Okay on this Beetle there were so many trouble codes on it I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to remember all the details but obviously our main complaint was a hissing noise and that was the hose running from uh, the turbo over to the diverter valve. That hose has boost pressure inside of it so it was making a hissing noise as boost pressure was le leaking out. I also feel like that was our trouble code that related to the diverter valve. Um, we also had a second trouble code that related to the solenoid probably N249 for mechanical malfunction. Uh, that was actually the diverter valve itself which wouldn't hold vacuum. And we replaced that and that trouble code went away, but we were still left with a very lean condition and the trouble code reoccurred for lean. And so we did some quick checks with some spray and found the intake manifold leaking vacuum. That also would have been a boost leak. So, because um, if, if vacuum's leaking in, boost pressure is going to leak out when the intake is under boost. So, replace the intake gasket, fix that. Uh, we didn't take any video of this, but we did have misfire trouble codes also. If I remember right, there was two misfire trouble codes. And we put some spark plugs in it, and that fixed it. It had auto light plugs in it, and we put NKGs in it. You know, turbo cars really need the right plugs in there. And after that, we drove it around pretty good, and it seemed to fix everything. Everything's working great, and it runs good. It runs like a top. I really think this is a good repair for this customer. If you learn anything from this video, click like and subscribe. If you want to financially contribute to the continued production of these videos, find the donate icon on my website at www.kansascitytdi.com.